Well, for more on uh, financial regulation and the health of the banking system, I'm joined by Stanley Fisher, the governor of the Bank of Israel. Thank you so much for joining us. There's less talk actually about regulation this year than last year. We had a lot of the bankers showing up in Davos last year trying to put a little bit of pressure on, uh, well, the policymakers and also governments not to be too harsh on them. Are you concerned that really they haven't been harsh enough? I think the uh, new regulations uh, that are coming out of Basel and out of the Financial Stability Board are actually uh, very good and go probably all the way that, uh, as far as they should, except in the case of how do you close down a very big international bank, which we still a problem which still hasn't been solved. Uh, but the big question will be implementation. The proposed regulations uh, look good. Uh, some of them are to be implemented only by 2019. That's a long way off. Uh, look, they look good? They don't look too, a little bit too weak? Because this is something that's actually coming up again and again, is that we'll certainly here in Europe, the banking system still, still looks very, very poor. That's a question of how rapidly uh, the uh, governments and the uh, regulators move to uh, clean up the banking system. And the delays which are built into the process at the moment uh, seem to be too long. So do we need to speed them up? We're talking about stress tests. The uh, last well, ones we had here in Europe weren't credible, were they? Uh, there were some concerns to that, if, <laughs> to that effect. Uh, it, yes, they need to be. The stress tests are fine. After that, you actually have to get the work done. Uh, once you've seen how vulnerable certain banks are, you actually have to clean them up fairly quickly. Is there a real concern that if we restructure a country such as Greece, then a lot of the banking system in Europe will have to take a, a very big hit? Yeah, in the uh, restructuring of debt, which everybody says, oh, you should restructure the debt as if it's nothing, will have major impacts on the domestic banking systems of any country that wants to restructure its debt and in Europe on uh, the whole European banking system. That is, if you write down country X's debt by 20% or 30%, there are banks holding some of that, and they've got to, then you've got to deal with a hole in their balance sheets. Now, Senator Fisher, we had that breaking news over the last 20 minutes, and actually S&P cut the credit downgrade, or downgraded uh, Japan. This is something that was pretty much unexpected, because we talk about the weakness in Europe, about the possibility of the Eurozone breakup. Is the focus today going to be on Japan? Are you concerned about what just came out? This is unexpected. Um, the, uh, Japan has been running big budget deficits and has a very high debt but very low interest rates and has had a high saving rate so it looked like they could Poor carry food. this along for a long time but it has been a long time uh, and this is uh, a warning uh, something which is not pleasant for Japan uh, but something which uh, could be constructive in the longer run do you think it's it's fair though the credit downgrade? I, I haven't looked at uh, exactly what the reasoning was and, and uh, I don't know. The US has a huge budget deficit. In fact, it's almost double some of the average, you know, the, here in the Eurozone. Uh, Mr. Rubini yesterday was telling us we still have to watch out for these bond vigilantes because once they start to attack the US and it's going to be real troubles. Do you adhere to this view? You always have to watch out uh, for them because if they decide to do something and they uh, get a head of steam behind them, uh, it, becomes a, it becomes a problem. The U.S. can run large budget deficits for a couple of years, but somewhere down the road, and not down the road uh, 10 years off, but in a couple of years, it has to come up with a credible plan for getting the budget back in shape. And uh, that's what people are waiting for. And so far, they've gotten credit for that. The U.S. has always gotten its budget back, yeah. its budget back in shape. Uh, the U.S. is definitely on the more stimulus camp. Right. The Europe is on the austerity camp. W which, w which camp are you in? If uh, you could credibly say that two years from now we're going to start implementing a program that will bring our budget back into shape and uh, stabilize our debt ratio, I'd be in the case of the U.S. for stimulus. If you can't give the uh, markets and your citizens uh, a pretty strong belief that that's what's going to happen, then you have to start acting immediately because that's the only way of convincing people. But how do you know that, that that's the case? I mean, how do you have, do you have that belief that we're, we can actually wait two years? Uh, yeah, I, I think, uh, for instance, the program of the UK government, which the major cuts are delayed a bit, 
because of the British parliamentary system is pretty, uh, pretty credible. Uh, whether other countries can do that is less certain. Your biggest fear for this year? Uh, my biggest fear for this year is uh, that the U.S. doesn't start growing as we hope it will. Forecasts now are around three, three and a half percent. That's what's essential to get the world economy back on track. That's why it's okay to have U.S. fiscal deficits for a year or two longer. Uh, that's a big worry, plus the inflation risk that many countries other than the U.S. Uh, and Europe, you know, 2.2 percent is not too bad, uh, face. So uh, those two things together. Stanley Fisher, thank you so much for joining us today.